Welcome to the second part of my review of the Microsoft Surface Pro tablet for digital painting. In the first video, I mentioned that the Surface Pro will need to be modified to make it more suitable for creating artwork. This is easily accomplished by installing software and optimizing Windows 8. But before we get into that, I'd like to walk you through the basics of using the Surface Pro and the Windows 8 operating system. All right, so let's talk about how to get started with the Surface Pro. First, when you get your Surface Pro, you'll have your box here and it's pretty self-explanatory how you open the box. There's just a little tab that you have to open, a little tape tab, then your box will slide out and inside of the box, another little tape tab here, you'll have your Surface Pro and your pen. Now, I've already taken mine out, of course, and it's already set up. There is a little instruction guide that comes with it that kind of gives you the gist of how to set everything up but it doesn't really mention anything about how to use Windows 8 and that's really half the battle there. So we of course have our Surface Pro tablet and also included in the box is a charging cable adapter which is magnetic and hooks on to the side of your Surface Pro. There's a little dock for it there. And once it's attached, a little light will come on. You'll know that it's charging. There's also a pen that comes with the Surface Pro, a stylus pen, like so. On the back of the Surface, there is a kickstand, which kind of folds up. It allows the surface just to sit there on its own, prop it sideways or prop it up however you want. If we look on the right side, there is a charging port and a port for the display port for an extra monitor. And there is a micro SDXC card port. On the opposite side, the left side, there is a headphone jack to plug in your headphones. So there's a volume up and down button and your USB 3.0 port. And of course there's a camera on the front, a little ambient light sensor, uh, microphone speaker on the top, and a camera on the back. First turn your Surface Pro on if it's your first time using it. The power button is on the top right side. It doesn't turn on. Try, try plugging in the AC adapter to charge it a little bit and then turn it on. And our basic navigation on our Surface Pro starts uh, with two options. One is the Start button, which you can touch to bring up your newer modern Start menu, and this will have all of your applications and everything that come pre-installed. There is also some swipe functions. If you swipe touching this black area here, and you swipe to the left, you'll get what are called charms, and these are kind of little shortcuts that do different things. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to turn your uh, tablet off or access your keyboard or some other options you can do that you just tap anywhere to make that go away you can also swipe from the top down and from the bottom up and from the left side to the right so for instance uh, if we tap to open something like let's say the calculator it opens automatically and we get this nice calculator now if we want to close it it's not so obvious what you have to do is you have to touch here on the top you have to drag and keep holding and dragging until it kind of breaks off and goes down here and disappears. I did that kind of slow. We'll try that again. We'll go back to our start menu. We'll open another application. Let's say this alarm. If we want to close that, we'll drag it down. Now, we can have several applications open at once. We could open our calculator and our alarm, and we can switch between them. If we slide from the left to the right, you'll get each window in order. And if you go really fast, kind of a zigzag, you go right, left, right, uh, then you'll get uh, a little list of all of your icons here. Now that we have an idea of how to navigate the Surface Pro, let's take a look at how to configure some of the basic settings. So we'll go ahead and swipe from the right side of the screen to the left here to bring up our charms, and we will tap on settings, and we'll tap on control panel. 
that'll bring up our control panel. And if you go to the top right here where it says view by, you wanna make sure that's set to small icons and then you'll be able to see all of these icons. So the first thing I recommend setting is the font size and that is under the display control panel. And you can choose from several options here. I like this larger option, 150%. That makes the fonts a little bit easier to see, but you could go bigger than that if you want. So after you're done setting that, it's going to ask you to log off and log back on. You'll need to do that to apply the font settings. Now, the next thing that we'll look at is the pen and touch mode. This is important because this lets us configure how the pen, stylus, and the touch features work. So under pen action, you'll see that single tap with the pen does a single click, a double tap with the pen does a double click, and pressing and holding with the pen tip does a right click. Now that's the same thing with your touch also. We'll go to flicks. I prefer to leave flicks off because flicks are something that you could do accidentally to do different commands. If you wanna keep these on, if you know how to use them, you can go ahead and do that, but I prefer to keep them off. And then we'll go to the touch and you can see that it's the same as with the pen. So we'll take a look at how that works after we go to okay here. If I tap and I drag with my finger or my pen, I can of course, drag my page. I can double tap to do a double click. I can tap to do a single click. And if I tap and I hold, see that little box appear? That's a right click. Same thing with my pen. I can do it with my pen to tap and hold. And there's my right click. Now we'll go ahead, go ahead and go back to the control panel. So we'll swipe again and we'll go back to settings, control panel. Now let's take a look at the tablet PC settings. Now this is important because initially your cursor may not line up exactly with your pen tip and that might make it kind of hard to use your pen. So what we'll do is we'll go to calibrate under display options and we will go to pen input. Now what you want to do is you want to try really hard to match your pen tip up with the center of the cursor. Don't worry about matching the cursor up with the center. Try to get the pen tip right on the center of this target as close as you can get it. And if you don't get it right the first time, you're gonna to wanna to try it again. And if you get it right, your cursor should be right at the end of your pen tip, very, very accurately. And I did a pretty good job there, so I'm gonna to go to okay. Now, the last thing we'll look at is power options. And power options will control how much juice your tablet's going to eat up while you're working with it. If you're gonna be keeping it plugged in and you really want it to work as fast as possible, you'll wanna choose high performance for your plan. It's gonna make your screen much brighter and it's just gonna make everything work much faster. If you want to just kind of have uh, average usage, you can keep it at balanced. And if you really, really wanna save power, you wanna maximize your battery life, you can set it to power saver. Or I might turn my screen brightness way down because the screen brightness really eats up a lot of juice if you turn it all the way up. All right, now before we do anything else, we want to update Windows. So first we'll update Windows 8 to version 8.1. That'll make it a little easier to use. And then after we update Windows to 8.1, we'll go ahead and go into the Windows Update control panel and make sure that everything else is up to date. So to update to Windows 8.1, you'll want to go to the Start screen by clicking the Start screen button. And there will be a little green icon called Store. Now I went ahead and removed mine from my Start menu because I don't use the Store but it'll look something like this. Uh, when you click on the store icon, you'll see an update for the Windows 8.1 update. And you'll go ahead and click on it or tap on it and go to download. And the download will install in the background. And once it's finished, you may have to restart your computer. Once you've restarted, what we'll do is we will go to the control panel again. So we'll swipe from the right side of the screen to the left, go to settings, control panel, and then we'll go to Windows Update. And you'll want to go to check for updates. And it'll check to see if there's any updates. You should have some. I only have one because I update pretty often. You'll go to install updates. And it'll do its thing and install the updates. Right now I'm installing an update for Windows Defender. That is the built-in antivirus that comes uh, with Windows 8. And from what I've read, it does a pretty good job as long as you keep it up to date and as long as you're not going to any uh, sketchy websites that might give you viruses, you don't have to worry about installing any extra antivirus software. 
So now your Windows should be all up to date, and then we can move on to installing some things like the driver to enable the pen pressure and the touchscreen shortcuts. All right, so the first piece of software we need to install is the Wacom Field Driver. And this will enable the Wacom Digitizer on your Surface Pro to recognize pen pressure from your stylus. So what you can do is you can go to this website here, uh, uswacom.com slash en slash field driver, or you can just do a Google search for Wacom Field Driver. You can download the driver here and go ahead and install it. And once it's installed, you'll be able to use pen pressure on your tablet in software programs that support it, like Corel Painter and Photoshop. The next piece of software we'll need is Auto Hotkey, and this will allow us to run a little script called ArtDoc. ArtDoc is this little script that somebody made. I don't know if it has an official website or not, so you'll have to go to this link here or do a Google search for ArtDoc Surface Pro, which is how I found it, and it's version two. And as you can see, it will overlay these little buttons on top of your screen, and that'll allow you to use Shift and Control, Alt, Space, Tab, Undo, Redo, Save, this is really handy because there aren't any external shortcut buttons on the outside of the Surface Pro. It says it's for Photoshop and Sketchbook Pro, but the Sketchbook Pro version will also work for Corel Painter. So this is really handy. So you'll want to download the installer for AutoHotKey first and install it. And once it's installed, you'll want to download the uh, ArtDoc file. It'll be in a zip file and you'll want to unzip and drag the contents of the artdoc zip file into your C drive. And then within that artdoc folder, there's a shortcut which you can put on your desktop or your start menu. And when you launch the shortcut, it'll go ahead and open this overlay on top of your screen. We'll take a look a little bit later at, at how to go ahead and use that. But now I wanna jump ahead to accessories real quick because I feel that this will really enhance your experience working with the Surface Pro. So the first thing I recommend is upgrading your pen. You can get this Wacom Bamboo Stylus Feel, which works with pen pressure, and it's a little bit nicer than the stock pen. Uh, it's made out of a, a more durable material, and it has a cap to protect the tip, and it comes with some replacement nibs. Uh, the nib that comes with it is kind of rubbery, so it kind of grips and it feels a little more natural. It also doesn't make such a uh, annoying tapping sound when you tap on the screen compared to the stock stylus that comes with the Surface Pro, which is just plastic. Now, the next option that we'll look at is a keyboard, and there is a keyboard cover that's made by Microsoft, but I don't think it looks very good in my opinion, and I wanted something a little more durable that's an actual keyboard with real buttons. So I got this Logitech tablet keyboard. Uh, it's you know, pretty reasonably priced, and it connects through Bluetooth, so you don't have to plug in a little adapter into your USB port, it just connects wirelessly. It's very good if you're gonna do a lot of typing. Next thing we'll look at is a protective sleeve or a case, and this is really important because you don't want your screen to get scratched up, and there really isn't any other way to protect it when you're carrying it around with you. So uh, this isn't the exact model that I have, but I have a little protective zip-up case. It's not rigid, it's just a little soft microfiber thing, but uh, it does a good job of protecting the screen, and what's nice is it's microfiber on the inside, so the inside of the sleeve cleans the screen, and it cleans off all the smudges and fingerprints. So every time I put it in the case and, you know, it kind of stays in there for a little while, it cleans the screen. I think that's really nice. Now, let's look at expanding the storage, because the Surface doesn't come with a whole lot of storage. Uh, there's a few different options here, some are faster than others, but we'll look at kind of the middle one here, which will be the USB 3.0 flash drive. Now, a flash drive, uh, a lot of people will have these uh, sitting around their house, so this might be an easy way to expand your storage. Uh, it's one of the faster options, it's kind of in the middle, but the only problem is these things are kind of big and you'll have it sticking out of the side of your tablet. might not be that, that nice to have it there. Uh, the speed is pretty decent. You'll want to look at the transfer rate on all of these options to make sure that this number is pretty high because that's going to determine how fast files copy to your device um, and from your device to your tablet. Of course, you want that to be as fast as possible. So USB 3.0 flash drive is one option. A faster option, I haven't really tried this, but I presume this could probably work pretty well, is a external USB 3.0 solid state hard drive. 
Now the transfer rate should be quite a bit faster. It says up to 572 megabytes a second. And you don't always get these speeds, but you get something, you know, closer to it. So this looks like the fastest option. And it's a pretty small little drive. You could have it kind of sitting somewhere, uh, you know, next to your tablet and then connect it with a cable. But again, that, that kind of, you know, decreases from the portability uh, of the tablet. It's not nice to have something like this hanging off of it. So we'll look at a slower option. The performance rate of these are quite a bit slower, only 45 megabytes a second, but these are nice little micro SD XC cards. They're, they're teeny, teeny, tiny little things that will fit into your micro SD port and they can just stay in there and they don't take up your USB port and it'll give you some extra storage. So, you know, if you're going to be just shooting photos or just kind of storing uh, some things that you're not going to access regularly, uh, this will work really well and it's a very low prof profile uh, way to store data. So those are some hardware options to upgrade your experience. Now we'll go ahead and go back to how to use the uh, pen pressure on your stylus and how to use the touch shortcuts. All right, so let's configure our stylus uh, for pen pressure. So we have the Wacom field drivers installed, and as I mentioned in the accessories, uh, I have this bamboo stylus, so I'm going to use it for this part of the video. That's uh, a very nice stylus. Uh, so what we'll do is we will configure the pen tablet properties, and those are located in the control panel. So we'll swipe from the right to the left, and we'll click on the settings charm. We'll go to control panel, and we will locate the pen tablet properties. Now, if you want to save this, as a shortcut that you can find later, which you might want to do, because I have it saved here, you can right click by tapping and holding. You've got that little circle and then you can drag and then let go over here and it'll create a shortcut. Once the shortcut's here on your desktop, you can double click on it anytime you want to load it. And I find that I use this kind of often uh, because occasionally I have to recalibrate my pen. Uh, so you can get to that very easily under the Calibrate tab, and then you click on Calibrate, and that'll let you calibrate your pen. Let's look at the other options here and see what we can do. So we have an eraser feel and a tip feel. Now, the only disadvantage to this bamboo feel stylus is that there isn't an eraser, but I don't find that I use the eraser on any of the Wacom pens because I don't really erase that often. Uh, so that really isn't an issue. This is a much better pen with or without the eraser. So we can skip eraser feel, but you want to use the eraser on your stock stylus, you can. Uh, we have options for buttons. There's only one button on, on, these, uh, on the stock stylus and on the bamboo feel. So we only have one option there, uh, but we can set the bottom option, which is the first button to anything that we want. I find that I have it set to a modifier uh, in, in Corel Painter, which will let me hold down the button and then I can resize my pen uh, or my brush size. So I prefer to have it for that, but you could set it to anything you want. Uh, and then we can set the tip feel, which controls how hard you need to press down to, to get pen pressure. Uh, this middle setting works pretty well for me. Occasionally I will set it maybe a notch higher towards firm. It kind of depends on how hard, how hard you press down. But if you tend to press down really hard when you draw and when you write your name, you're probably going to want to set it more towards firm. And double click distance just controls how, how many how many seconds or milliseconds between your double tap it takes to register a double click. So if you find that you click very fast or very slow, you might want to put it the setting. We can go to advanced and there's some settings for hover click and click and tap. If you want to try to change these settings, we can go to okay. I'll just leave it how it is. Uh, if you want to click sound, you can keep that on. If you don't want to click sound, which would be really annoying, you can turn it off. We'll go to pop-up menu, and pop-up menu only works if you set your pen button to pop-up menu. Uh, pop-up menu will give you a whole bunch of different options, which could be helpful for other programs, but I don't find that it's very helpful for, for Corel Painter. And we'll take a look at Calibrate again, and that's uh, just in case we need to calibrate our pen. So those are the pen tablet properties. So you should now have pen pressure. Now, the only way to test your pen pressure is to install Corel Painter or Photoshop or another program that supports pen pressure. So I'll just really quickly open Corel Painter just so we can verify that the pen pressure works and you can see what it's actually supposed to do. 
So now I have Corel Painter X3 open here and I have a brush selected and I'm going to try pressing down very lightly and I get a very thin line. And I'm going to start pressing down harder. See how my line gets thicker? You can have a thick line and a thin line and everything in between. So this works just like a pencil or a pen. It's really, really nice. I mean, you can get some very, very, very fine detail here with this pen pressure. So we can see that pen pressure is working. Everything's good. Now, the reason why we need these uh, shortcut buttons overlaid in our next step is because in Painter, you can see it gets kind of cramped here. And if I want to do something like uh, hit tab for instance, I don't have a tab button and even if I set one of these shortcuts to hide the interface then the shortcut buttons are hidden and I can't get them back so it's nice to be able to have shift and control and all these other buttons that you would normally have on a Cintiq or on a keyboard but since we don't have that we'll have to go ahead and use this auto hotkey script called art doc so I'm going to minimize painter real quick and I've already got art doc installed uh, again, you want to make sure that you unzip the file and that you put it into your C drive under Art Doc. And then you can, of course, drag this shortcut onto your desktop and then you'll have it there. And when we double click on Art Doc, we can load it up. It appears up here in the top left corner and it doesn't do anything when you put your pen over it. Your pen's going to make it disappear. It's like that for a reason. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your hand your finger to hit one of the buttons. Now if you're going to use Photoshop you want to hit the Photoshop button. If you're going to use Curl Painter you want to hit the button in the middle with the S on it. Now you get these shortcuts here. If we go back to Painter, now you can see if I hit the Tab button it works like Tab. If I hold the Space button it works like if I hold the Space Bar. And I mean this is really really nice. This makes it so I don't have to have my keyboard uh, I can just use just the tablet and just the pen. And that, to me, is very, very awesome. I can do undos. And I can do redos. I can save. I can use control and alt and shift and all those things. It's really nice, but especially this tab is nice because now it frees up my whole screen. I can get in here and I can draw. Now, if you want to close Art Doc, uh, you can click this X to kind of compact it. But if you want to make it close all together and just stop working, you'll have to go to your taskbar. And uh, if you look in your notification area, you'll see this little green box with an H. This is your art doc. You'll have to do a right click, so you'll have to tap and hold on it. And then you'll want to go to exit, and that will close art doc altogether. And of course, if you want to get it back, you can just run the program again. Now. You'll also notice there's this other weird little head icon. Uh, this is the, the T-Guard little program that comes along with Art Doc. And what this does is this disables your touch while you're drawing. Now, sometimes that's, that's useful and sometimes it's not. You might find that you're in Painter here and you're trying to you know, use your touchpad shortcuts and they're not working or you're trying to tap on your brushes and that's not working. That's because this T-Guard is on. Uh, if you want the T-Guard to go away, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go to your notification area and you'll have to just tap and that little slash will go away. Now you can use the touch all you want and you can zoom and rotate your page and all that stuff. So sometimes you'll want it on, sometimes you'll want it off. Uh, if you want to just, again, if you want to just disable both of these, just right click on the art doc icon here and go to exit and then it'll just go away altogether and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So now that our pen pressure and our touch screen shortcuts are set up, let's take a look at how to do a few more optional tweaks to make Windows 8 and your Surface Pro work a little bit better. So you can free up RAM and storage space by uninstalling programs that you don't want. And there's a whole bunch of junk that I uninstalled that I didn't need, like the calendar and weather and all that stuff. Um, what you want to do is you want to tap on something that you want to uninstall and hold and let go. And you'll see down here at the bottom, there is an option to uninstall, and it'll uninstall that particular application. So go through and remove anything that you don't need. Uh, just look through the whole list and see. There's also some stuff hiding. Uh, if you hover your pen over this little arrow here, you can see everything that's on your computer that's installed. So there might be some additional things here that you don't know about. And if you want to uninstall them, 
you can tap and you can hold and it'll give you some options to remove them or append them to the start. So if there's something in here that you've installed like Illustrator or Photoshop and you want to pin it to the start, which means uh, put it in this other menu up here, you can do that pretty easily. You just tap and hold on it and then you go to pin to start. If you want to uninstall it, you can uninstall it. So now that we've freed up some storage space and RAM, let's take a look at how to configure Windows to be a little more user friendly. Personally, I prefer this desktop mode over the modern start menu. The modern start menu works pretty well when you just want to launch an application, but when you really want to just operate your computer and do file management and things, you're going to want to be in desktop mode. So I'll go over here to desktop mode, and then we'll be in the desktop mode. So getting all these icons here uh, can be a little tricky. What you want to do is we'll get the Windows C drive first, so we'll double click on computer and we'll tap and we'll hold to do a right click on C and we'll drag over here to create a shortcut. That'll make a shortcut for C. You can do this for any of the applications or features that you want to. If you want to get to the shortcut for one of these applications like Painter or Illustrator after it's been installed, what you'll have to do is you'll have to hit the external windows button on your Surface Pro exterior and then you'll want to locate the application that you want to create a shortcut for. So we'll go ahead and go to this little menu here to get all of our applications. And let's say, for instance, we want to put a shortcut for uh, Adobe Illustrator, even though I already have one. What we'll do is we'll tap and we'll hold and we'll release and that'll give us some options. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to open file location and that is going to open a folder in the start menu called programs and that should give you access to just about everything that you have installed and you can just tap and you can hold do a right click and do create shortcut for any of these installed programs so then on your desktop you'll have access to all of your folders you could put your control panel here like I have I even have some folders that link to the files on my desktop computer so I can really quickly go onto my desktop and pull off files or transfer files back and forth through Wi-Fi. I also have the pen tablet properties and everything else that's on my computer here. So it's all very accessible and easy to get to. The color profile of the Surface Pro can be upgraded to the Adobe RGB color space. This will enable your digital painting software to utilize a wider range of color. So you'll want to go to Adobe's website or just do a Google search for Adobe CMM. Uh, you'll download the file down here at the bottom and go ahead and unzip it and install the software. Once it's installed, you will go to your control panel and you'll look under color management. And under color management, you'll go to the advanced tab and you'll select Adobe RGB as your color profile. If you don't see Adobe RGB in this list, you may have to restart your computer and then try it again, and it should show up there. And that'll go ahead and make the, the default color profile Adobe RGB. Now, you'll really only be able to use this in programs like Adobe Photoshop and Corel Painter, but basically what it's gonna do is it's just gonna give you access to more colors, which is gonna make your artwork look better because it'll be more vibrant and have more depth. It'll also translate to print much better. Now that the Surface Pro is optimized for digital painting, we'll move on to part three of this review and take a look at the Surface Pro with Corel Painter X3 and Photoshop CC.